Hi there, today I'm going to read Bumble the Bumblebee. It's written by Ellie Larkin and illustrated by David Cato and Elizabeth Cato. Um, so this God's book and there was earth and sea and sky. God spoke again and created all kinds of animals, birds, fish, and insects. Each creature, great or small, was different from any other. God watched them all, swimming, swooping, leaping, creeping, and flying, and said, very good. So here we have the butterfly, a big beetle. And we have little bugs and worms, a ladybug, and a dragonfly. That's one of my favorites. What's your favorite animal or insect? Bombus, one of the bumblebees God created, bobbed among the flowers of the new earth. Like the honeybee, he drank nectar for breakfast, lunch, supper, and snack. Unlike the honeybees, however, he could barely squeeze his big fat body into some of the blossoms. So he just gets right in there, but his little bottom just sticks out, doesn't it? Bombus was big, and he was noisy. Other bees buzzed. The bumblebee rumbled. Also, he was clumsy. While the honeybees darted in straight flight, he lurched from side to side, bumping stems and leaves. He seemed happy enough. The honeybees soon discovered that Bombus bumblebee did not leave much nectar for them. Although they raced to be the first to the flower, Bombus usually won. When he bumped into their flight path, they would only turn away or let him crash into them. Once Bombus spied the best blossom, the honeybees took second best, or so they thought. Look at him get snuggled in there. Finally, the small bees decided on a plan to trick Bombus. Early one morning, they waited for him by the tallest, sweetest flower. When he arrived, they greeted him politely. Good morning, Bombus, they buzzed. Well, good morning, he answered. We have all been wondering, said one honeybee, how anyone as large as you could fly. Why, I fly just like you do, answered Bombus. Oh, no, you don't, said the small bee. Watch, can you do this? I bet that's where they're talking to him and stuff. They got long wings. The bumblebee has little wings. The honeybee darted straight up, did a zigzag dance, and gently landed on its flower perch. Bombus fanned his wings so fast, they hummed like a honeybee's wings. He leaped straight up. Instead of flying, he wobbled to the left and then to the right. Losing control, down he flopped. They can do all kinds of things because they're tiny little. Watch us, cried the other honeybees. Away they zip. They are zipping around. Bombus carefully watched each of their movements. They darted this way and that, up and down, performing intricate honeybee dances. Their striped bodies flew in perfect balance under long wings. He's kind of amazed at how much they're doing, isn't he? Haven't you looked at yourself, called one of the honeybees? Your body is much too fat and heavy for your wings. You are not shaped right for flight. Bombus looked at himself. His huge body was coated with thick fur. His wings were short. He looks kind of sad now. Even his legs looked bulky and heavy compared to the small bee's legs. For the first time, Bombus realized how different he was from other bees. The honeybees settled around him in a circle. One of them said, It is obvious you were not meant to be a flying insect. Have you ever felt like you weren't supposed to be what you are? Because that's not true. Well, let's go on. Another bee said, You must have misunderstood your instructions. 
You are not supposed to fly. You should crawl, the bees sang in their humming voices. Crawl like an ant. No, Bombus cried. I can fly. His stubby wings shook with anger. He stumbled and tipped nose down into his flower. They're kind of upsetting him, aren't they? The honeybees laughed and laughed. Bombus couldn't say a word. Even though the fall had not hurt him, he felt a strange pain somewhere under his furry coat. He thought, I am fat and ugly and different. No wonder I can't fly like they do. The pain grew, probably right here in his little heart. The honeybees left. They zoomed to the highest, most colorful blossom. As they gathered nectar, they gleefully hummed to each other. No Bombus to bump us, no Bombus to rush us, no Bombus to gobble the best. He looked very sad. They had distracted the big bee from the finest feast of all. Poor Bombus was more than distracted. He was flustered. Sadly, he watched flies dart, wasps hover, and mosquitoes flit. They all fly. Why can't I? He wondered. The butterfly, the hummingbird, flies and wasps, they're all flying. Bombus watched the dragonfly, the butterfly and moth. He could not drift in the air as they could. Could it be that God had not meant him to fly? Oh, he said to himself, if only I had listened more carefully in the beginning. For a long time he sat and thought. He tried to remember exactly what God had said. Suddenly, Bombus heard a loud roar. A giant beetle flew over. That's a big beetle. Beetles do sound loud when they fly. It beat the air with powerful wings. Its heavy body wobbled in flight. Bombus tingled with excitement. He's big like me. Maybe I can fly slowly like he does. Bombus stretched groomed his fur, and braced his feet. Still, Bombus worried. I wonder how he takes off. Raising his wings, Bombus slowly flapped. He could not make them roar like the beetle's wings. He jumped into the air anyway. Kerplop! He fell on his fat stomach. There he is, all kerplop. There he goes. The honeybees are right, he decided. I was not created to fly. I will join the creeping things. The thought made him feel heavier and heavier. I think he was sad. When the honeybees buzzed in effortless flight above him, Bombus crawled up and down the shortest plants in search of nectar. By evening he was so tired and he decided to sleep on the last zinnia blossom he had climbed. And that's where he's going to sleep. He's just so tired. Just as he tucked his aching feet into the top of the bloom, the voice of God called gently, Bombus, what are you doing? Why are you climbing up and down flowers? Oh, most high, I made a mistake, Bombus fumbled. I thought I could fly like the honeybees. Now I understand that I can't. I can only crawl like the ants and caterpillars. What made you think you cannot fly, asked God. Like he's having a conversation with the Almighty. The honeybee showed me that I am not shaped right for flying, said Bombus. I shall talk to the honeybees, said God in a voice that shook the tops of the ho highest hollyhocks. But you, Bombus, you listen to me. Bombus listened very carefully. God said, I told you to fly. No matter what your shape or weight, you can fly because I gave you flight. Now lift your wings and fly. Bombus forgot about the dancing honeybees. He thought only of the words of God. He lifted his wings. He fanned them to a steady rumble and away he flew. Not like a honeybee or a dragonfly or a beetle, but like a bumblebee the way he was designed. From that day to this, bumblebees have always flown. 
Even so, for thousands of years, everyone said bumblebees were not shaped right for flight. Not one knew how their short wings could lift their heavy bodies. No one knew but God, who gave them the power to fly. And there he is. They're all flying about all together. And that's the end. Thank you for listening.